blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Give me your hand up, and I want to take it from the scriptural point of view by starting with an incredible scripture found in Acts chapter 26. Acts 26, one of the scriptures. I later in our career began to consider seriously why such a verse should be in the Bible. I'm not sure some of you have at any time asked yourself, is there a verse like this in the Bible? And then you come across it. Is found in Acts chapter 26. I read verse 7 and 8. Unto which promise are twelve tribes instantly serving God day and night, hope to come, for which hope's sake King Agrippa am accused of the Jews. Verse 8. Why should it be taught a thing incredible with you? 
that God should raise the dead. To all of you who are English, that's a very strong scripture. Stand to your feet. Ask somebody, why do you think God should not raise the dead? Oh, Lord God. Are you with me? Why do you think it's not possible for God to raise the dead? Say that. Please talk loud. You are not us. Talk loud in English. One, two, go. Paul used the word, why do you think it's incredible for God to raise the dead? Why do you think it's out of place? Let's, let's read it together so you can memorize it in your head. Verse 8. Acts, let's say Acts 26. Am I speaking English tonight? Yes. Acts 26. Say that to everybody. Acts 26. One more time. Acts 26. Verse 8. Now put it together. Acts 26 verse 8. Want to go? Why should it be taught a thing incredible with you that God should raise you? If that's all I'm able to teach tonight, I've scored a very big point as a teacher. It's asking all of us, what do you think is beyond reach? Or it's a surprise for God to raise the dead. Why? The word why is enough. You believe that God can heal headache? How many of you believe that? Very easy. You believe that God can stop coughing? You believe that? Very easy. You believe that God can heal fever? Very easy. Most of the things you believe are not visible. Those things you believe are minor. A doctor like this can tell you it's a serious one. I've seen people killed by fever. I've seen someone die of headache. I've seen someone die of belly trouble. Every sickness, once it's called sick, it kills. It is in our hands that they are categorized into stages, standards, and strength. But as far as God is concerned, sickness is sickness, minor or major. Sit down. All right. It's the same thing, people who believe that God saved their soul, but you cannot prosper them. It depends on where you are operating, the environment of your knowledge. There are many who believe that God can save, but God cannot heal in churches today. Very common. Many denominations believe the days of miracle are over. But when you come to a wrong place like this, you find it's not over yet. If you believe the Bible, you are in the right place. But if you don't believe in the Bible, you are in the wrong church with the wrong pastor in the wrong ministry. This is a good scripture. Why do you think it's incredible for God to raise the dead? Do you know that when I read this, I read another scripture that said, Jesus was crucified before the foundation of the world. Before he was born, he died. That, those are scriptures that you don't read in England. Even in Africa, very few pastors can preach it. Jesus that was crucified before the foundation of the world. How can he die before he was born? Because that's what the Bible says. And for you to believe that he died before he was born, you have to ask who said so. You believe that? Yes. Have you heard that before? Yes. Jesus was crucified before the foundation of the world. The lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Things like that are in the Bible. Why? He wasn't born yet, he died. He was crucified, slain. Up to Isaiah, 700 years before he was born. 
He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace were laid on him. By his tribe we are healed. He wasn't born yet. Wounded. For you to face the subject of raising the dead, I want to start from far, far behind. Number one, I want to state categorically, it is not a ministry. Raising the dead is not a calling. Say, I'm called to raise the dead. No. No man is called by God, specifically given the subject, thou shalt be raising the dead. I have been privileged to raise nine people from the dead, but I don't have a signboard. If I had a signboard of raising the dead, I would not be here in England tonight. And I can name the nine, beginning with my wife. That's nearer the, the one you will see in two weeks' time. She, she will be here. So, it's not a ministry. Let us establish that. So you are not going to leave here and say, Idahosa told me my ministry is to raise the dead. I don't have the ministry of raising the dead myself, even though I've seen nine. If I was aware that those dead will rise the day they were raised from the dead, I would have gone with camera crew, newspapers, so I can get the glory. If I can raise two people from England, I would never be poor for the rest of my life. Oh God. I go and look for where they buried John F. Kennedy. And tell the Kennedy family, where's your father? <laughs> Two billion. They give me. But God never notified me. I did it by accident. It happened by right. <laughs> Poor English. But very good. All right. So, I like to say that, number one, no one should take glory for raising the dead. But it is the will of God. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. It happened in the Old Testament. The first, one of the first scriptures where the dead were raised in the Old Testament is found in 2 Kings. I'm going to take you through the Bible tonight so you don't quote me when I'm gone, but you quote God. 2 Kings. I just hope that is in your Bible. Second Kings chapter 4. Fourth chapter of Second Kings. Look at your Bible very well tonight. It's not too long. We are told in the following verses. In verse... Are you in chapter 4 now? Okay. Verse 18. When the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out of his father to the reapers. And he said unto his father, My head, my head, and he said, Lo, and he said to the lad, Carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. Well, the first death is not this scripture. First death is in Genesis. Two brothers, Cain and Abel. That's in your Bible. Okay? There was no ministry by any prophet at that time. The Bible was too new, and God didn't want to start life by raising the dead. But the blood of Abel cried. That's resurrection. I'm not sure you are hearing what I'm saying tonight. The Bible says his blood cried from the ground. If he, did, if he died and was absent in totality, his blood would not have cried. That's resurrection, but not visible. His blood rose from the dead. His body was buried, but his blood was alive. Resurrection first. But the visible resurrection, I think this is number two. This one I'm reading to you now. All right. Look at the next verse. Verse 20. 
When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and he died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. Verse 22. She called unto her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses, that I may run to the man of God and come again. And he said, Wherefore, wherefore, would thou go to him to, today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And, he, and she said, It shall be well. Then she saddled and asked and said unto her servant, Drive, go forward, slack not thy riding for me, except I bid thee. So she went and came unto the man of God, to man Kamel. And it came to pass, when the man of God saw her afar off, that he said to Gehazi, his servant, Behold, yonder is that Shodamite woman. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her and say unto her, Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with thy child? And she answered, It is well. Verse 27. When she came to the man of God, to the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to thrust her away. And the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is vexed with her. And the Lord had hid it from me, and had not told me. Then she said, Did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me. Then he said to Gehazi, Guide up thy leons and take my star in thy hand, and go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not. And if any man salute thee, answer him not again. And lay my staff upon the face of the child. The mother of the child said, As the Lord liveth, as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. And Gehazi passed on by, before them, and laid the staff upon the face of the child. But there was neither voice nor hearing. Wherefore he went again to meet him, and told him, saying, The child is not awake. When Elijah, Elisha was come into the house, behold, the child was dead, and laid upon his bed. He went in, therefore, and shut the door upon them twain, and prayed unto the Lord. And he went up and laid upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands and he stretched himself upon the child and the flesh of the child waxed warm then he returned and walked in the house to and fro and went up and stretched himself upon him and the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes somebody shout hallelujah Amen. Visible resurrection, Elisha. Of the 16 miracles that Elijah did, raising the dead was not one of them. But of the 31 miracles, for the 32nd that was done in his absence, that's a different subject altogether, Elisha asked for double portion of the gift that God gave to Elijah. He performed 31 miracles. One of them was the raising of the dead. Another miracle that I want to quickly refer to for the purpose of the subject of raising the dead is the death of Isaac that God replaced with ram yet the bible says he was crucified and god raised him from the dead that one didn't die physically but god said he died and when god said died he died but this is a visible one the child died elisha was called for by the shunammite woman I didn't ask you for a child. Now he's dead. Give him back to me. First knowledge here is that there must be a demand. And there must be an urge. And there must be a will. And where there's a demand, there's a will, there'll be a way. 
come give my son back to me. The story is easy here. He followed. Well, Gehazi wanted to do it for a show. You sent me, I did it. But Elisha was the one needed by God. Gehazi could not finish his race. It would have been the only miracle he did before he became leprous. But Elisha went with the woman and the way it was done is spelled out here. God, the first and foremost, the woman took the child, laid on the man of God's bed, believing that in that bed is a resurrection power. Went to the man of God, brought him in, and the man of God met the child on his own bed in the house, apartment that the woman and her husband built for him came in and did all that the Bible said here. And the scripture said, he sneezed seven times. His body warmed up and he came back to life. First authentic resurrection in the Bible. Old Testament. There are others. But in the New Testament, Jesus also raised the dead. You know enough of that. In the Bible. You know enough of the resurrection of the dead in the Bible? Yes. How many people Jesus raised from the dead? He raised the damn cell, which was my first challenge. Paul raised the dead in Acts of Apostles. But before we go into all those ones, let me read to you the scriptures that dealt with the power of raising the dead. Let's go straight to Matthew chapter 10. You shall read. It's a subject. Matthew 10. Everybody say Matthew 10. Yes. When he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirit to cast them out. And to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases. Verse 8. Heal the sick. Say that to everybody. Heal okay. the sick. Okay. Verse 1. Do you believe that? I mean, you, you are hearing there that he gave them power against unclean spirit. To cast them out and to heal all manner, any kind of disease. And all manner of sickness. Verse 8. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely ye have received. Freely what? Give. Yeah. Oh Lord. It's part of the scripture. Before I come to the, these days example. Jesus gave it as instruction that the sick should be healed, lepers should be cleansed, the dead should be raised. So it's not a wrong subject or a foul thing. Matthew 11. Are you there? Verse 1, it came to pass, when Jesus had made an end of commanding his twelve disciples, he departed them to teach and to preach in their cities. Verse 2, when John had heard in the prison the work of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Verse 4, let me start, stop in verse 1 and 2. John got disgusted. John got discouraged. John put himself in trouble. John was a preacher of all you do wrong. No mercy in his message. He was a iniquity discoverer. But he prophesied. He said, I show you your sin, but Jesus takes it away. 
Every sin John saw, he pointed it out. But he said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes it away. I show it to you, God takes it away. It's a ministry. John was the sin pointer. Jesus was the sin taker. Now who will you follow out of the two? The man who show you how bad you are? Or the man who turned you from bad to good? Alright. You don't care. It's alright. I just ask, who will you follow? The man who says, you are terrible. Or the man who says, I can turn your terrible situation to terrific. Thank you. Two people. Which one will you follow? That's ten people. Which one will you follow? Alright. John show it to you. Jesus takes it from you. John saw the sin that Herod committed with Herodian and said it. Many things Jesus saw that have taught me a lesson. A pastor that wants to have a growing church must be merciful in his message. And I, I show you an example of the, one of the worst sins. A woman was caught in the, in the act of adultery. They brought her before Jesus. The Pharisees and Sadducees said she was caught in the very act. Every time I preach that subject, I love it. She was caught in the very act. What did you go there to do when you caught her? You didn't hear what I'm saying. You who caught her. That's not your house. That was her house. What took you there? To catch her in the very act. She must have been your old customer. And the reason you came to report is that she missed you and followed another man. That's how I teach it at home. Because if you, if you caught her in the very act, she was not in your house, what were you there to do? Do I make sense to you? Because if you caught her, you must have had the spare key of her door. That's strong. Well, this is for only married people. That's okay then. <laughs> huh? you, you have the spare key to her room. When you opened another man was there, you were very disappointed. <laughs> so what you did was to go and tell Jesus, see what I saw. And Jesus said, okay, no problem. How many of you? Seven. One. On Monday, David, you were there. On Tuesday, John, you were there. On Wednesday, Simon, you were there. On Thursday, the Bible said, when they looked down and saw their names, the stone that they raised, they put it down. And Jesus said, fine, go and sin no more. How did that one come in? How did this subject come in? John's behavior and Christ's behavior. Mercy and pardon. Are you hearing me? Okay. But John put himself in trouble and he was put in prison awaiting to be killed. But he heard all that Jesus was doing. He got very troubled. Why did Jesus not come here to bail me out? It was not John. It was not Jesus that sent him to prison. His mouth and his poor gospel. And when you are a pastor that's only a sin discoverer and not a sin forgiver, your church will never grow. It doesn't matter how much you preach hell. And if you preach hell too much, many of your members don't make heaven. I hope somebody is hearing what I'm saying tonight. If you preach poverty too much, there will be no many cars in the front of your church. If you love poverty. If you love sickness, many of your members would not be well. We're on the subject tonight, raising the dead. Look at verse, John got discouraged, sent for Christ. Verse 3, Matthew 11, 3. He said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered, and said unto them whom he sent, Go and show John again. Somebody say again. Yeah. One miracle is not enough. More than one is good. Show him again those things which ye do hear and see. 
The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised up. And the poor have the gospel preached unto them. Now you can shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Jesus said, Beside the sight for the blind, strength to the lame feet, cleansing for lepers, hearing for the deaf. Part of the gospel is that the dead are raised up. Did you catch that? Yeah. It's part of his ministry. It's part of the gospel. Look at John chapter 2. He commissioned us, raise the dead. He preached it, it's part of the gospel. But John chapter 2, look at how he affected himself. Part of himself. John chapter 2. Verse 18. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What shall share thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Power for himself to raise himself. Not only to others, for himself. If you kill me according to Jesus, three days time, I will raise it up. He said, this one promise have I received of my father. I have power to lay down my life and I have power to pick it up again. Himself. Beside raising others, he has guaranteed for himself that his body will not see corruption. You should like that. Amen. Amen. So slow. And the rest didn't even respond. But it's good. I say it's good. Alright. John chapter 5. Just follow me. Don't worry. You are not the one teaching. John chapter 5. Verse 19. John chapter 5. Are you there already? Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he said the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showed him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater work than these, that ye may marvel. 21. For the Father raised up the dead, and quickened them, even so the Son quickened whom he will. Not only disciples, thank God. Not only Jesus, but God himself. Raise the dead. Is that too strong for you? I'm asking, is that too strong? This is Jesus speaking. The work of raising the dead is a work of marvel. Bringing the dead back to life is a marvel. But it's part of the gospel. When you go nearer to God, he shows you what to do. He tells you when to do it. He backs what he promised. The son of himself can do nothing. But whatever he hears the father say, he does. And whatever the father bid him to do, the raising the dead must be under divine command. Amen. Say big amen now. Amen. I know you don't like it, but say it once in a while. Amen. Try one more time. Raise the dead. 
Jesus said, I only do it because the Father has done it. And he has given me power to do it. It's hallelujah. hallelujah. And more than that, I want to say this, the day is coming, all of us will be raised from the dead. Amen. The Bible said, the dead shall rise first. And we which are alive, those of you who die, you will die. Those of us who refuse to die will be here. When the trumpet sounds, you come up from the grave, we who are standing here. All right, Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Hallelujah. Acts 2. See whether that is in your Bible. Some of the subjects that helped me as a young preacher. Verse 30 is the main thing we want to read. But we have to read what led to that. Verse 29. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried. And his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had, had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his limb, according to the flesh, he will raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Seen, he seen this before. Uh, uh, is that in your Bible? Verse 30. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of this leon, according to the flesh, he will raise up Christ to see on his throne. Do you believe that Jesus died? Yes. Please answer me. Say yes. yes. Okay, I'll be telling you what you're saying now. Say yes. yes. Jesus died. Say he died. For he, he rose again. Now, now. he's sitting. On the throne, at the right hand of the Father, the same Jesus. Before he died, he said that you may know that the Son of Man had power on the earth. But when he rose from the dead, he said, All power in heaven and on earth is given to me. His resurrection that gave him dual power in heaven and on earth. Before he died, Son of Man had power on the earth. But when he rose, he possessed the two powers. All right. Acts 26 was the one I read to you before. It's not incredible for God to raise the dead. You can read that for clearer understanding. And if what you read is right, we can now go to Romans chapter 4. Romans 4. Ha. Romans 4. Watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. 
simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preacher's pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Are you there? Verse 17, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed even God, who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were. God quickened and called them. 18, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Verse 21, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Verse 21, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. 22. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. 23. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. 24. But for us also, to whom it was imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. 25. Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Resurrection is the only reason you are saying praise God tonight. If there was no resurrection, all the songs they sang here tonight is ceremony. So not only that raising the dead is scriptural, is the only reason why we are here. I'm sure that's beneficial to you. I think I'm conveying the right thing to you. If Jesus did rise, all the songs we sang tonight wasted. If Jesus was still in the grave, I would not be here tonight. So it's more is more than just talking of ordinary people dead. We are considering the life that death has produced. But the resurrection of Christ, our justification is assured. And not only that our justification is assured, is a hope of eternal life. For if Christ rises not from the dead, serving God is a waste. Thank God for that one amen. First Corinthians 15. First Corinthians. Corinthians first. The 15th chapter. Are you there now? Verse 10. But by the grace of God, I'm what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. 
11. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believe. 12. Now, if Christ be preached, that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Paul is saying here, before we get to 14 and 15, that even in the church, some people still believe there is no raising of the dead. Including the raising of Christ from the dead. The argument has been there. If you continue to be there, but there's no proof that God didn't raise Jesus from the dead. Verse 14. <sighs> and if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and our faith is also vain. Verse 15. Yea, and we have found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up. If so be, that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. Look at this same scripture. If the dead, ordinary people. Okay, Angel, you are here. Bishop, you are here. If we don't believe in the raising of other people, that of Christ is not authentic. It's as strong as that. It's as strong as that. Now question, how many of you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead? Raise your hand and say, I believe. I believe. Say it louder, I believe. I believe. And the Bible is saying that if other dead are not raised, that of Christ is not as important. Or, or, or it's arguable in law, my barrister. That's arguable. You can argue. If only the death of Christ is the only death raised, it's questionable. Let's look at the scripture again. Very simple. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. Verse 16. Meaning what in English? Jesus is not the end of resurrection. You can join me to say big amen. amen. As a matter of fact, the Bible says he's the first fruit to rise from the dead. And because he rose from the dead, we also expect resurrection. No matter how long I want to live, sincerely or jokingly, it's appointed to every man who wants to die. It doesn't matter what injection is given to me by doctors. It doesn't matter how many oxygens are fixed in my body to keep me here. I must keep my appointment. Because with the flesh, no eye shall see God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? No. Everyone will keep the appointment. Kings and queens have come and gone. Prime ministers and presidents have come and gone. Preachers of the highest order have come and gone. As a matter of fact, when you begin to get old in the ministry, you start to get disengaged to get ready for that death. You may deny you don't want to die, but inside you there's assurance that you are going to die. Why people like me preach life and health and strength so often is to give you hope to live long. Because if I say, oh, very soon I'm going to die, many of you will not serve God again. <laughs> so it's better for me to tell you, no death yet. Amen. amen. I say amen. amen. And that's guaranteed to me, no dying yet. Amen. Haven't said that. I've established to you from Old Testament to the New Testament. Death and resurrection is scriptural. But now let's look at some few scriptures that I want to consider. 
Mark 137. To help you, just in case you want to try it. <laughs> it will be very difficult for a, a British Christian. And almost all Christians. So look at what the Bible says. Mark chapter 1. <sighs> All right. Let me read some of the scriptures. Verse 27, Mark 1, 27. And they were all amazed in so much that they were questioning. I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com, the world database of Christian preachers, to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about Anointed Tube. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. themselves saying what thing is this what new doctrine is this for with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits and they do obey him and immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee fought with fought with when they were come out of synagogue they entered into the house of Simon, Andrew, and James, and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever upon an anon, and they tell him of her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she ministered unto them. And at evening, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, and them that were possessed with devils. But 33. And all the city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many that were sick of divers diseases. And cast out many devils. And suffered not the devils to speak. Because they knew him. But 35. And in the morning. Rising up a great while before day. 
he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. When and when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek thee. He said unto them, Let us go into the next town, that I may preach there also, for there I came forth. Jesus was a constant healer. Jesus healed all manners of sickness, including those at the point of death. That's what I'm establishing in that place. No matter how near you are to death, even when you could no more speak, he will still pray for you. Praying for the sick, you may not believe, but I want to say this for common knowledge's sake. Many of the people that have been healed in this ministry would have been the grave if they were not healed. The fact that they didn't die before they were healed does not mean they would not have been dead by now. Raising the dead is an improvement of the sick. That's a good English. Because if you were not raised on time, you would have been dead. So that should not astonish you that somebody rose from the dead. Because there are many, many, many who would have been in the grave by now if they didn't receive healing. If they did not receive resurrection from that sickness. If the spirit of death was not bound. Before Professor Yahweh left home, and many times I, I pray for people here. You hear me occasionally say, sometimes, you foul desperate, leave this body. It means there was a death beside. It, that, that doesn't mean they were raised. But there was a spirit of death behind the sickness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, language will I use that will make you hear what I'm saying. Alright? If someone is very, very sick, he was a child in this church, born and almost dead in this place. I think the child is still alive till now. You remember what I'm talking about, the little child. Doctors gave the child up. God picked him up. Oh, that's a good language. Come on, sir. This one, 21 years ago, no hope. 21 years later, graduate. She didn't quite get to the grave, but she came back. Whether near it already at the point, the fact that this is an evidence today that she's alive is the working of miracle. The God who severed her from death, who brought her from the point of death, is the God that has kept her. And many of you have risen from the dead many times without dying totally. I want to establish that to you. Sometimes you were so sick, you were not sure you'll make tomorrow. But somewhere, somehow, the resurrection power of Jesus touched you. That you were prayed for and you are still living. So it's not only when one is buried and come back to life that he actually dies. In medicine, there are some people that are said to be in coma. That's dead. But when the mercy of God reached them, they come back. There are three ways of dying. Dead to be dead. Dead near dead and die very well. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Luke chapter 1. I'm saying that it's not only when you get to the grave, verse 37. For with God, Nothing shall be impossible. Is that in your Bible? 
Question, is there anything too hard for God? Matthew 9. Matthew 9. Verse 18. Why he spake these things unto them? Behold, there came a certain ruler, and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Jesus rose and followed him, and so did his disciples. What did the man say has happened to the daughter? I said, what did the Bible say happened to the daughter? He died. Verse 27. When Jesus departed thence to the tents, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou, son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. But 37 will tell you another miracle. But 35 tell you another, but 33, another miracle, but 35, another miracle. Let me look for the scripture I'm looking for here. Huh? 23. Okay. When Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the mistress and the people making a noise, he said unto them, Give place, give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose. Resurrection. 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 I say resurrection. I'm saying resurrection. God is still raising the dead. Somebody say amen. amen. That's the scripture. Matthew 9. Mark chapter 9. Mark. M A R K. The one that concerns you and I. And what helped me as a young preacher? I'm still young. Somebody say hallelujah. Verse 23. Let's all stand up. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. Read it by yourself. One to go. How many things can you do yourself? I say, how many things can you do? Say all things. That's heavy. Say all things. Louder. All things. All things. I read this 35 years ago. All things are possible to him that believe. I read Matthew 10, 8. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. I ask question. If you read my life story, fire his bone. Pastor, have you raised the dead before? He said no. Can I do it? He said yes. I took my bicycle from 11 o'clock in the morning till 4 p.m. I was going from house to house. Is anybody dead here? They said, no, oh God. 
Now that there are many people here. Because the sign of sin, you know that somebody died in Africa was a garden. Did anybody die here? They say no. What of death? Is anybody dead there? No. Four o'clock. I got to number six or seven. Lawani Street, Benin City. I met them shouting and wailing. What happened? Somebody died. I jumped up. I said, hallelujah. <laughs> they said, what are you happy for? I said, I've been looking for the dead for the last five hours. And they say, here you are. Three years old child. I took the child. Amen, amen. Act of the zeal of ignorance. Hey, 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 hey. Pray. He died more. <laughs> Sweat came on me. I was looking for where to go out. There was only one door and it's blocked. <laughs> oh, God. Why did that tell him it's what I've been looking for since morning? I put the dead cops down. I turned to the Bible. He drove them all out. I said, okay, all of you, out. And they left. <laughs> Here's the cops. Here's the coffin. Jesus drove all of them out. So I said, all of you, go out. So they left. So that I can find door. <laughs> that was my joy. Not, not that I was too sure now the child will rise. I said, out, everybody. Now my eyes are red. <laughs> then I read the scripture. He said, damn said, I say unto thee, arise. So with the last Samson strength, with nothing to lose <laughs> except to escape. <laughs> I told the name of the one in the Bible was Damson. So I asked the parent, what's the name of this child? This time I'm, I'm vexed. I'm furious. And they say, no, I say, okay, in the name of Jesus, you know, I say, come up! And by the mercy of God, she passed a scripture on my shed. And I slapped her three times. You silly thing. Look at my dress. <laughs> I saw my dress before I saw that she was risen from the dead. <laughs> and I began to jump. He's alive! Somebody said that. He's alive! He's alive! She's alive! She's alive! She's alive! She's alive! I began to dance, not minding the escrita on my shirt. I was jumping, she's alive, she's alive, she's alive. The whole family began to rejoice. And the young man, Andrew, that came with me, began to jump, he's risen. And that was my first experience, 32, 35 years ago. And after that, well, I brought the, I brought the lady out when you came to Benin. She's now mother of seven children. And our church in Benin, Akorero, is still there. Many of the people raised from the dead that are in Benin, they are still there. Many of them have, many of people who have come. If you come in November, you still see them. It's not fake, it's real. You cannot say you raise somebody from the dead. If you don't, they will sue you. I know many preachers that raise people in the air. Yes, I raised many people from the dead. But when you say, where's one? They say, not here. <laughs> Seven or eight out of those I've witnessed are still alive. And the parents are grateful to meet you tomorrow. Bernard Ekato's son was raised from the dead. A five-year-old boy. Taken to school. Had fever on the way. Died. The mother went to work to call the father. The father came to my working place six hours later. He said, he can't die. This child cannot die. This child cannot die. He's the only son I have. I said, let's go. I went there. Look at the child. In the name of Jesus, come back. And God honored his word again. I saw that one. In Ghana, a man climbed up, painting a seven-story building, bank building. And the ladder slipped. 
and head to the ground. Wow. And all the whole crowd ran away. And that most of it was with me. Mrs. Akwerechi and many other women and my wife were all there. I looked at his head split to two. I didn't know what to do. Suddenly I heard, that's the works of the devil. Call him back. I got the head together. Asked of his name. Called him three times. And the fourth time, he answered. Today, he's a living witness. And he's not a preacher. And General Achapong, the head of state of Ghana, gave me national honor for raising that man back to the dead. To raise the dead is scriptural. But don't do it unless God tells you. <laughs> I hope you are hearing what I'm saying. I've seen many places they come and call me and say, can you raise the dead today? I say, no. That's not what I came for. But can it still happen? The answer is yes. Under the urge and persuasion of the Holy Spirit. It's not for a show. Is for demonstration Amen. that Christ has not changed. The sick, the blind see, deaf hear, dumb speak, the dead are, the word in English are, means more than one. Am I right in law? Are, A R E, are, raised. You can do it. I say you can do it. Amen. I say you can do it. Amen. Many of our Bible students have heard me preach this. And in anger they go out. Some of them get results. Some of them get failures. But many of them get more results than the failure. Finally, I want to say this. If it's only the death of Christ that is resurrection... Our gospel is not complete, according to Corinthians. The resurrection of Christ is first. Many more resurrection, and one day you will be the final resurrection. Yourself as a proof. Join hand together with somebody. Holy Spirit, you have not changed. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you have not changed. Hebrew 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Thank you for the privilege of knowing that you who died nearly 2,000 years ago is a part of the church today. I pray that no one will be afraid to raise the dead. And I pray that no one will boastfully go look for dead to rest. But wisdom and understanding we will glorify you. Thank you that you are not the God of the dead, but the God who raised the dead. And through us, it is possible. For with God, all things are possible. And to him that believes, nothing shall be impossible. Thank you for this subject today. I pray that wherever they will hear this message, wisdom will be applied to do what you say can be done and to stand up on your word that you have not changed from the Old Testament to the New Testament and the great commission that we should preach, teach, heal and raise the dead. Thank you, Lord, for the completeness of your word. In Jesus' name, let every one of us say, 
Amen. Amen. Say amen. amen. I say amen. amen. I'm saying amen. amen. Before I give the microphone back to our bishop, let me read the scripture. Jesus said to the disciples, in Mark 16, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. If what you heard tonight, you don't believe it, you'll be damned. Don't be damned. I did my best to explain the scripture. If you can't raise the dead, heal the sick. If you can't heal the sick, open blind eyes. If you can't open blind, cleanse lepers. If you can't cleanse lepers, open deaf ears or stop deaf ears. Maybe that ear. To be deaf ears, to die in the ear. I hope you are hearing me. There are many parts of the body we are permitted to raise from the dead. If, I know you are not afraid, but if these two legs were to be dead, when the Bible says, make the limb to walk, that part of the body was dead. If he walks, half of his body has been raised to death. Then to the man who is deaf, part of his body is dead, ear. When he hears, there's a resurrection to his head. Are you understanding what I'm saying? There are many splintered parts of the body that we are permitted before the totality. If this eye were closed and it opened, then blind eye. Blind eye means dead eye. If you open, that's a relation to the eyeball. I hope you are hearing what I'm saying. There are many parts of the body you can raise to the dead if you can't raise the whole. I think I'm making it easy now. <laughs> if what other that part of the body can die? All parts, actually. Head can die without the heart stopping. If you can heal the head, that's a resurrection to the head. If you can heal the waist, that's a resurrection. If the hand is paralyzed, and stretch forth your hand. And the dead have come back to life. Even though it was not the whole body that died, that's a resurrection to that hand. Yeah. Am I making it easy enough for you? Yes. So if you cannot raise the total component, place part of it. Oh, it couldn't be easier than this. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Ah, if I was having, look at this, my finger. Three straight, one bend this way, the other one curve. If it was like that, naturally, and you're able to make it straight, you raise one finger. Yes. It's a resurrection. Yes. So don't look for the hole here. Look for a small one you can do. <laughs> <laughs> On a more serious note, if you can't raise the totality of a dead person, raise part of the body of the dead. I saw you on the video. You gave a wonderful testimony. Of what God did for you. I'm sure you are the one. That's a resurrection. You are living resurrection. It's not because of your whole body died. But there was something in you. That was going from you. That God brought back. That's why you are sister and complete. I know of this young man. You. Yeah. You, you. <laughs> I know of this young man. How many years ago now sir? What did God do for you? He done a lot of things for me. Yeah, but first of all, uh, well, I had a massive heart attack. Yes. And uh, I got prayed for, and I was all right. How many years ago? Six. Six years ago. Maybe he would not have been here today. 
if it didn't happen that time. Now, if you are waiting till you get to the final place, it may be too late. I hope you are hearing what I'm saying tonight. Don't wait for the grave. And don't wait when you are in coma. If your hand is separating from you, let them call it back quickly. If it's your feet, let them call it back quickly. Because if all your parts separate, the whole body may follow. But the earlier each one begins to come back, the better it is. And God is still raising the dead. And they prove that God raised the dead. Somebody shout hallelujah. 58 years later. Last week was my birthday. 58 years later. Look at me. 2,000 years later. Look at Jesus. We are living proofs that the dead are raised for the fulfillment of the gospel. Heavenly Father, I'm grateful for the courage to teach that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Raise your right hand up, everyone. Touch these hands by your resurrection power. It's part of the commission. Forgive sins. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. His commission is obligatory. And the fact that many are afraid does not mean it can happen. I pray, Lord, that your mighty hand be manifested. That these lives become dead raisers. Quickness of the dead. Healers of the sick. Saviors of the lost and givers of life. Thank you for these hands shall be laid on the sick and they shall recover. And with this prayer request in my hand, whatever the needs are in body, soul, and spirit, may it be met and your name be exalted. Thank you. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Amen. Put your hands down. God bless you. Don't be afraid. If the Holy Spirit asks you to pray for the dead, do so. You'll be surprised. We will get the result of this prayer tonight. Did you hear me? We will. We will. We will. God will surprise you. One day you find the person you never thought can come back to life again. By this your hand tonight, miracle can happen. Somebody say amen. amen. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.
Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idahosa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idahosa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was a Dowser's level of faith, beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual, a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high, and the law in society. A man who rubs shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. It, it's a blessing. And it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyedepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's Chief Igbenidion, had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told me, in the preach, he said, this is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached. It was on the podcast. And the man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then, sometime later, we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. On getting there, I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop in the Hosa of Church of God Mission International. It was an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onicha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the 
uh, advanced team to go and paste posters all over Odisha. And we went to put posters all over Odisha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform and, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye-opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin uh, my class. Actually, I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training, and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Ida Hosea University, all those. And well, he's, he's a man we can't, we can't forget. He was a great example to us. And I thank God. It's particularly good for us, whites, British, because in Britain, uh, people are rather skeptical these days. You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis went to Baltimore flew to New York and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are, and it's raining cats and dogs. What do you want us to do? And when I looked through the window, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would move, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Archbishop Idaosa. He would say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said, God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back up. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. Then he sat down five minutes time. The pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we were on the sea. We have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. 
Now this is where the testimony is. Mama, if also was there, you can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid, can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? <laughs> I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. Chief Ibnidion, he called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar, and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came, he said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here. There won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned. His name, Chief Eboho, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one on one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others feared to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. It also started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness. I was I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010. And just before I spoke in his world conference, they said, uh, oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me their sticks and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits, and I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you, and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop Idahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives.
Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street, and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And, and one of these days, he was riding past, and people were crying in my house. What's <laughs> up? And he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, ah, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. And the people say, Ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. Till this time it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, he please, I beg you, don't don't make a mockery of your God. He said, No, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that uh, uh, behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpent, to tread upon scorpions and to raise the dead and I said listen don't make a mockery of yourself the kingdom of heaven is at hand heal that sin raise the dead I said what I beg what did I talk Benson. You mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? But you say I can do it. Yes. In the name of Jesus. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was she. She was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, "Listen, this baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate." And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But, uh, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood, at the, I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Child. Be healed. I will bring to you an offering. After he prayed, he asked me, What is the name of the child? What's the girl's name? I said, It's Inwarata. 
I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world knows about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, about three hours later, my father come, my late Ben Sinidahosa. He said, what is happening? They told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried to can raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she's swallowing there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him, come back to life? My father said, yes. He said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray with God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. That is how I'm a living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about 9 o'clock sneezed. <laughs> Another look back to me. After a year and three months in the womb. So, my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Many said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Did you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand there, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. <laughs> with him to the mother. He said, please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, what is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power superpower then i wasn't a child of god my mother used to serve um, she was a princess of olokun shango and all that and i said mm, the the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power so the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying. I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, 
let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like us. That young man that we call pastor believed and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayers, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came and said, where is the child? We said, the child is there. And I called him to the room and I said, you know what I did last night? I did know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. I said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer, and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today I'm alive. I have about eight children, two girls and two boys and six girls. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, 
prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I'd like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard session, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938 to a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on the farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. 
The leader took correspondence calls from Britain and the United States while working in Bada Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akpos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young Benson, young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a night vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following, said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his knees before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night, renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing, more people confess Christ as their Savior, and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself, and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastored churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he also he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of Bishop of, Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robot. Uh, university in Oklahoma. It also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971, a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the World Faith College, New Orleans, and a Doctor of Law degree from Ora Robot University in March 1984. He also received another degree. He also received other degrees from the International University in Brussels, Belgium. Archbishop Benson and his wife Margaret Idaosa were blessed with four children. Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was Idaosa primary concern with a motto Evangelism Our Supreme Tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all, 123 countries all over the world. Crusade played a major role in his ministry. He was involved at least one crusade per month. A record crowd of nearly one million people a night attended his Lagos crusade in April 1985. He established the Redemption Television Ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about our Bishop Idaosa? According to Mrs. Gordon, Father Lisser, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA. I know of no young black in all Africa who is preaching, who is reaching millions as Benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in, in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast, in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States 
where he often appeared on national religious telecasts. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrates is a, a demonstrate he is especially called of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from, his, from this mighty leader of God's people said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981, his Bible school attracted upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe, and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop. Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminars have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that African has a part in God's work and African will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christians in their own land. Idaosa rose from the rank of an ordinary man to a world leader's leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Dowser. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself he was very humble and full of godly wisdom have bishop bensi idaosa was said to be the leader of over seven million jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the lord in february 1998 
Now I'm going to talk about his early ministry again. As a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor at Paul and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establish, establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Benson Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes including my god is not a poor god your attitude determines your your attitude determines your attitude it is more risky not to take risk i am a possibilitarian a big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck if your faith says yes god cannot say no among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ryan Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, Word of Faith, Group of School. Benson Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of a son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa. His wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the Church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video to bless other people and make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.